I work at the archaeologist. Uh, it's a division of the International Store of Museums in Sweden. Uh, the presentation I would like to make today is showing an example of how we in Sweden have been able to use archaeology together with the treasure of the contemporary maps of the National Archives. My example is from the town of Kalma, where several excavations at the Bastion Calulus Numus, uh, named after King Charles IX, and research and the archives have shown the struggles that could appear when building a fortification at this time. Uh, it would take about 50 years before the bastion was completed. The town of Kalma, uh, for those who don't know, uh, is situated at the coastline in the southeastern part of Sweden, down here, about 40 miles south of Stockholm. Uh, Sweden's border, you've seen the map before uh, from Tom, um, during the medieval times, the pale area around here, and you see the brown colored areas are the colonized territories during the Great Power Period. Uh, in the medieval times, Kalmar was one of Sweden's largest and most vibrant towns. And just to give you uh, a brief background, Kalmar had a strategic important harbor and a national castle. Uh, this made it a power political hub uh, from where trade with the continent started off from and operative military events took place. Hence, it has also been referred to as the key to Sweden. Uh, at the time of our interest in the 17th century, it was just a few miles to the Danish border, our most intense enemy. In 1611, King Gustav Adolf began his reign, uh, and as you know, he inherited three wars from his father, uh, against Denmark, Norway, against Russia, and against Poland. That same year, Kalmar and the castle were sieged by the Danes. The town at this time was surrounded by a town wall <clears throat> that at the end of the 16th century had been modernized with bastions and both wet and dry moats. Through old maps at the National Swedish Archive, we can get an image of what this looked like. Down here uh, is the, this is the spy map, it's from 1611. Um, hard to see, so if you clean it up, you have the castle just outside the shoreline, the medieval city, and here are the um, medieval walls, and just outside, I'm not sure if you can see it, um, are the bastion that were modernized at the end of the 16th century. Oh, okay. Right. <coughs> The fortification surrounding the town was modernized again after the siege. This time, Dutch architects were an engineer was called in by the king, together with fellow countrymen as craftsmen. Andres Sersander, Paul von Essen, and Hans Fleming are names that figure as contractors behind fortifications uh, at the old town of Kalmar. The latter of these, Hans Fleming, um, uh, he's um, the constructor behind many castles and fortifications in Sweden at this time. Um, from this map, dated 1625, we can see that the fortification consisted of seven bastions um, and also moats and mounds and uh, outworks. On the map, you can also see to the right, Tom Holman. Um, this is the place where the Privy Council, for the benefit of defense, decided to move and uh, build the new Kalman. The decision, decision was made already in 1640, uh, as the Thirty Years' War progressed. After approving the final plan, the work began in 1649. 
This map is from 1648. Um, the new town was to have fortifications with uh, nine bastions and a rebelling facing the mainland. Uh, the line was facing the mainland. Um, it was built stronger with double walls and mounds. The rebelling was also connected to the mainland. The bastion, as you see uh, here in the north, uh, also, as you can see on the map, to begin with, the shoreline uh, had to be straightened um, uh, in order to uh, shape the defense line on the walls. This meant that a bay had to be filled out uh, in the north of uh, the coastal inlet uh, called Man Fjärde. Uh, an enormous amount of sand and soil had to be transported to the bay. The last decades, several archaeological excavations had been taking place regarding Carolus Nunus. <coughs> this bastion is the only complete excavated bastion in Kalma. Uh, at these excavations, uh, the point uh, the western flank, the eastern flank, oh, and also wooden constructions just north of the bastion, and also the same construction at the east, they have been found. Uh, with a map from 1698 as background, uh, it shows the bastion next to the neighborhood that was also created down here in the south. Uh, the different areas that have been excavated are shown uh, with the red lines for instance here. Among many things, the excavations have shown the process and troubles of building uh, a bastion. Um, this is a table uh, of different activities regarding the bastion at different times. I've listed here the years of activity, uh, what type of activity they've been been, been doing and also the area they've been focusing on at a certain time uh, and also the sources that I have used archaeology or contemporary maps or both at some points. Uh, everything began with uh, the construction of a dam surrounding the islet. Uh, it was continuing to the western flank and then over the years around the bastion. The most intense period seems to have been in the 1660s, but it would take uh, until the end of the century before the wall would be raised to its full height. Uh, like I mentioned, the work began in 1649 uh, with the construction of a dam in the west and in the north uh, of Farnholmen, just up there, its, uh, its shoreline. This was the area of priority. It consisted of parallel placed poles and planks from where water would, could be pressed out with, water, with mill wheels. Then they were able to start the, the construction at the waterfront. We have the parallel poles and planks here, um, just outside the point. This is from an excavation about 25 years ago, and these are more recent, just a few years ago. Uh, this is the western flank. I have the western flank here, the adjacent curtain. Um, the base lab of timber under the uh, western flank uh, had been, uh, with Denver chronology, dated to 1655. This is the earliest work done at the Bastion, followed by plaster of the wall, but not to its full height. Apparently, the inner area of the bastion had been marshy, probably due to wrong filling material in the bay. To come to terms with this, uh, the wet uh, area of the canal was built here from the inner area through the west uh, flank and the outlet you have it here. And at the point again, same picture as before, uh, the base lab beneath the point had been dated to 1662. 
And this is the first contemporary map um, describing the work at the fortification, and it's from 1664. It regards the bastion Kelonus Lunus, and it reports about the stone being collected from islets nearby. It also mentions continuing work at the dam and plaster on the wall. Furthermore, it mentions also uh, that a lot of soil being transported to the inner area. Already in 1665, they continued to the eastern flank and the connecting curtain. They had the flank here, picture is from the north, and the adjacent curtain. Uh, the base slab of timber in the flank had been dated to 1666, uh, although the map tells us that it has been done a year before. The dating of the timber could therefore be representing a repair of the base slab. The plaster made here were through a small timber construction found in the corner, just a small one located here. It was dated to 1668, uh, but again, the maps let us know that this began already in 1665. The interpretation here is that the archaeological result must be referring to the continuous work raising the wall later on. This is one of the uh, one of several maps presented from 1666 until 1670. They look about the same, but each year that is they are describing what has been done uh, on the fortification and also how long it took. A few decades are passing, and they have started to concentrate on the uh, the eastern and the southern part of the fortification. But in 1692, they are returning to the bastion Carolus Nunus once again, and its western flank and point, uh, to plaster the wall this time another three to four feet. A few years later, in 1697, they once again are filling the inner area with soil. So just to have a small conclusion. In this case, we were fortunate to have contemporary maps to relate to and to question both the maps and the archaeological result. The conclusion is that the history of the Bastion Calorinus Nunus had been made wider through the analysis of both maps and archaeology together. Uh, several inaccuracies would be the result if we had had only one of these. The result regarding Calorinus Nunus is that it took about 50 years to complete. This shows the complicated and enormous effort uh, it would take to fortify a town. Right. Thank you.